My name is Stanley Sword and I have the pleasure to welcome Lee Kemp, multiple world champion in freestyle wrestling. Uh, and you were also the Olympic coach for the USA team in the 2008 Olympics, where you conquered a Olympic gold. Uh, and you have an exciting journey, Lee. Tell us, why should we start out wrestling? What does it bring to life? Well, um, my perspective on wrestling is, is one that I owe almost everything that I have accomplished in my life to wrestling. And that's a bold statement, a strong statement. But I believe it to be true because uh, it transformed my life. It uh, it allowed me an opportunity to really uh, see what I was made of, if I can use that phrase. Uh, wrestling is one of the uh, one of the greatest challenges that you could ever do. It's it's a physical struggle, uh, one on one. No one can help you. Uh, your coaches could be around. They could be you know in the chair watching, but you look toward them. They can't help you. You've got to figure it out on your own. There are no timeouts like other sports. There's no uh, where you can get, you know, maybe the coach can put you out for a while so you can rest. And uh, you have teammates you can pass the ball to when you're in a – wrestling is all you. So you take all the victory, take all the loss. So to be a wrestler, you learn how to deal with life and you learn how to um, pick yourself back up. If you get taken down, if you get beat down, if you, you only you can correct that. Mm. So um, it it allowed it put me on a path that as I started to learn how to be successful in wrestling, uh, that path has continued to this day. All the different things I've gone through in my life, it's been like a wrestling match, and I'm very familiar with how to pick myself back up in a wrestling match, and I and I've done it in my life. And people has wrestled for thousands of years. It's an ancient sport, and and it's kind of a natural way to inter interconnect, going head to head, so to say. Uh, yes. Is it, do you feel that connection with former generations when you're when you're on the in a match? Yes, it, I, I do. The connection is one of um, reverence and respect. Very similar to me. I, I mentioned Dan Gable. He was kind of a legend when I was younger. He's, he's about eight years older than me. So when I was 18 years old, you know, uh, you know he was uh, uh, 26. Uh, so he, um, you know, like the way I look toward him, some of the younger athletes look maybe toward me and others like that. So it definitely is a sport of reverence from one generation to the next, you know, the, you know, the current generation, they do look at the former champions and they want to learn from the former champions. So hmm. I'm very honored and proud to be one of those former champions. Yeah. And there's some different styles in wrestling. You were the freestyle wrestler. Tell us about the different paths you can choose. Um, freestyle wrestling, uh, is actually very different than uh, the the other style that you're referring to. It's called Greco-Roman wrestling. The the difference is freestyle. You can attack the entire body. You can attack the legs as well as the upper body. Greco-Roman wrestling. You can only attack the upper body. So you can't you can't tackle the legs like you would see in in wrestling like a like a football tackle or a double leg tackle. It's all upper body. So the match tends to be uh, more more throws, like headlock, like judo. It looks more like judo, but without the gi. So it's wrestling. It's actual wrestling. Where judo mm -hmm. is um, the, you know, the the match would start and it ends right with a, a throw. It's over. Or mm -hmm. points are scored and you get back to your feet again. Where wrestling is continuous. After a, a takedown, then there's action on the mat where you're trying to put your opponent on their back and pin them. That's all the same, but the difference between freestyle and Greco-Roman is you can only attack the upper body in Greco-Roman. Freestyle, you can attack the entire body. And uh, Lee, did you have a unique style? How do we see it's Lee Kemp in a match? You know, I, I, I did have a unique style. Uh, uh, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. I attack the legs uh, from my feet. 
where most wrestlers today, if you watch a current wrestling match today, and even back then, wrestlers would attack the legs similar to a football tackle, where they would they would they would dive in sort of and get both legs and drive the opponent over. Where my style was on my feet and I would attack the legs from one leg, a single leg. My forte was a single leg takedown from my feet, and I would take the leg like a like a strike. I would strike at the leg with my arms and pull the leg in, and I would still be on my feet. And then I would take the person down from standing. So I was very different. Not many wrestlers wrestled that style. Hmm. And um, so if you talk to anyone about Lee Kemp, they'll say, oh, yeah, Lee's single leg was unstoppable. So, yeah. I, so that, that was my... And tell us, for the years to come, you know, in, in 10, 20 years, how do you think freestyle wrestling will change? How will it develop? What will happen? Well, I've seen the changes. Um, you know, I mean, the changes are very similar to what has been happening ha- happening in all sports. And that change is the athleticism of the athletes. I mean, you see athletes now, today, doing phenomenal physical acts of acrobatics in their sport of wrestling, as with all sports. But the wrestlers, in specifically, you see them doing things from a from a athletic and acrobatic standpoint that didn't exist in my day. Mm-hmm. You know, the quickness, um, the strength, as you know, with with all sports, there's just the athletes are getting more and more um, more knowledge because of the science and the technology behind better nutrition, better biomechanics, better recovery, better all of it. So the athletes are doing things that they didn't do when I competed. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to watch in all sports too. And how much is strength? How much is technique? How much is, is, uh, you know, endurance? What's the different components of, of a great wrestler? That's another great question. I'm glad you bring it up because that's what I'm proud of in the bout and wrestling. It, it's all of them. Uh, strength, it might be something you it, just right away intuitively might think, okay, be a wrestler, you have to be strong. Well, you don't have to be strong sometimes if you have better technique or you have better leverage. Sometimes a tall, thinner, skinny type of wrestler would just beat up a short, stocky, strong wrestler because of the leverage component. Very, you know, no different than like in boxing. Sometimes a long, you know, skinny boxer has more leverage, more reach you know, could jab better because they're longer, keep distance better. And the shorter, stockier uh, boxer in this example never gets an opportunity to use that power and strength. So very similar to wrestling. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, there's some short, stocky wrestlers that have, you know, mastered their style and they find ways to get through the longer wrestler trying to keep distance. So whoever can master their craft the best can use the skills Body type, uh, conditioning is a kind of is a, a common denominator. You you have to be able to have endurance to wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, strength is is important. You have to have a certain level of strength, but it's not all strength. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of tactics involved in wrestling. Um, because there's no timeouts, you can't take a break. Uh, you could be getting beat in a certain tactic, and you've got within that six minute period of time, you have to figure out how to how to defend that tactic and then create one of your own. Maybe your best technique's not working, so you've got to figure it out. Like in mm-hmm. a like American football game, there's halftime. You know, coaches go in the locker room, they kind of get on the drawing board, they figure new things out. A, a, a soccer, whatever, those games last for an hour. The wrestling match is six minutes long with no breaks, and six minutes goes by like that. And so you have to be able to adapt. I always think that, and of course I'm, bias, but I think to wrestle, you have to have a high level of intelligence to be able to figure things out very quickly, and you have to make like split decisions as to what technique you're going to do at that exact moment. And timing is really important. Just like all sports, but wrestling timing is important because I'm trying to do a move on you, and you're trying to stop me. So if you're, if you're as skilled as I am, I've got to find a, a microsecond opening and I, I have to create that opening through my knowledge and technique and strategy. And once that opening's there, I have to have the skill 
the knowledge, skill, and technique to make that happen in like a microsecond. So when you watch high-level wrestlers and you're not a wrestler yourself and you don't follow it, you may be watching, oh, man, it's pretty boring. There's nothing going on. Because it's not like a, bo- a knockout in boxing or a slam dunk in basketball. It's these little micro movements that a connoisseur of the sport will be sitting there watching these little minute adjustments and then a score. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're raving over it. Ah, oh, did you see that? Did you see that technique? Did you see that timing? You know, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a very unique sport. And we as spectators, is there anything else we should watch, you know, carefully in order to enjoy it the most? Is it, like you say, yeah, if you watch I, football, it's not so hard to, there's a goal and they, they score. But how do we enjoy the art of wrestling? If, if, if you look at wrestling as an art form, which I, I always did, um, and if you look at it from a standpoint of you have two people that start standing, they're facing each other, and it's not boxing, so you're not hitting You have, to, you have to grapple is a word that's kind of a generic word for wrestling. Grappling is more intuitive. When you say wrestling, people think, okay, but grappling takes it a little, little bit deeper into what is actually going on when you're wrestling. You're, you're grappling with this person. You're, you're trying to gain an advantage. And in wrestling, there's weight classes. So both, com- both combatants are the same weight. And you, you weigh in in a formal weigh-in. And so y- you don't have a size advantage per se, in weight, you may have a, a height advantage maybe or a, or a strength advantage or maybe even a, a quickness advantage. But you have to somehow um, neutralize all that. So to a fan, when you see this strong, muscular wrestler, and there's a lot of them, I, I guess I was more in that camp. I was kind of in that, a stronger type of a, a physique. But when you see that type of wrestler going against maybe a taller, skinnier wrestler, It's nice to say, okay, let's see what that skinny guy can bring to the table. And if they're at the World Championships or the Olympics, you know that they're both good. And a lot of times you'll see this skinny wrestler apply technique and strategy and tactics that can, you know, sometimes just totally subdue this guy who's really athletic. And, and as you know, women wrestle now. So that adds another dynamic to it. So, um, so you see the same things playing out when the women are competing. Hmm. And when you started out, you were quite, uh, there, there, there weren't so many sports. There wasn't so much competition for, for the kids. Now it's UFC. It's a lot of different uh, martial arts compared to, to uh, before. Does it, does it bring something to wrestling? Because there's, there's a path you can make money out of wrestling. Or, or does it compete with wrestling so they steal the talent from you, so to say? Well... That's a great question. It's one that I have to answer this way because UFC didn't exist when I was competing. Obviously, you know, UFC is relatively a relatively new sport, really. I mean, like in like in 2008, it existed, but it wasn't anywhere like it is today. So 2008, my last wrestling match was 1984. So there just there was just nothing for me as a as a way to make money at it. So uh, now I put my perspective to that today in 2021, it absolutely is providing a way for wrestlers to make money and, and not even the champions. There's a lot of wrestlers that weren't, that didn't achieve great success on the college level or never even made a U.S. national team, but they have the wrestling fundamental down. So then they learn the other fundamental skills, the boxing, the striking, you know, the, the jujitsu, and they apply all that and they become, a UFC champion. So, uh, um, so, so, so it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's beautiful when you think of it like, like that. So mm-hmm. it, it does provide a chance for the star wrestler. And there are some like Henry Cejudo. I mentioned him several times. He was an Olympic champion and he was on a Wheaties box. So he was going that direction, but he also realized that he could fight as well. He grew up, Uh, in fact, his story is a great story all by itself. You know, he, he, he was a, you know, a Mexican immigrant, had a very tough life, the whole bit. So he grew up fighting, you know. So wrestling was a, a civilized way for him to, you know, better his life. And he won an Olympic gold medal. But then he realized, man, I, you know, I could, I could do this too. I, you know, I grew up fighting. So he knew how to fight. He, I think he was trained a little bit as a boxer. 
And he learned the other skills, and man, he just is unbeatable. So, you know, again, fighting is not my, doesn't fit my personality at all. Uh, I was um, kind of characterized by coaches as a very, very non-aggressive wrestler. I was like a Ferrari that was kind of like <laughs> sitting in the garage most of the time. <laughs> and then, it, you know, you would pull the Ferrari out when you needed to win it, you know, to, to score a takedown, and you'd pull it back in. So I, I was uh, very subdued, my style, and that just fit my, my, my personality. Uh, I had a coach characterize me as intelligently aggressive, and I always liked that. I was aggressive, but I just picked and chose when I needed to, 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 to score points. Uh, and fact, what would I your, would say, mm -hmm. no, go ahead. Uh, what would be your three best pieces of advice for the next generation in, you know, who want to become world champion in wrestling, just like you? Well, the good thing is there's a lot of, lot of people to pattern yourself by. I use Gable, although I learned his training methods and his mentality, and I didn't necessarily have the kill instinct like Gable had. I had my own personality, but I still could use things from him to allow me to become a world champion. So there are, there are enough athletes, men and women, that any aspiring wrestler can find somebody that they can kind of feel like that person best suits their personality. To me, in, in life, everyone has their own personal style of how they do things. And, and um, I, I certainly embody that. And I think any person in, you know, going out for wrestling, wanting to be great at wrestling, they're going to impart their own personality into it. And they're going to absorb some of the personality of some of their mentors, some of their coaches. Mm. And, and uh, for parents, you know, what would be the, the best pieces of advice there to bring the kids to the wrestling club? Your son, you... you uh, lured him into wrestling and he became a great wrestler as well. How do you, how do you, why should you bring your kids to the wrestling club? Wow. That, that's a, that's a great question. I, I wanted my son to wrestle because I wanted him to be tough because I knew life. Was tough. And, uh, based on my documentary, um, for those of you who are going to watch it or who have watched it, you'll see that hard time in my life. I was away from my kids for a long time. So when they came back in my life, my son was in, 80 pounds. He was skinny and scrawny. He was kind of, he was with his, you know, I would, he was with his mom with before that. So maybe he was babied a little bit more than, than as a dad, if I'd have been in his life, I'd have wanted him to be tougher. So wrestling was my chance to, to in, in a controlled environment to have him learn how to gain some, some skills at uh, resiliency, picking himself back up, being tough, that one-on-one -on -one, like combative type of thing. It wasn't boxing. I wouldn't have wanted my son to box, but wrestling was, perfect and i saw him transform uh physically first of all because to wrestle you, you brought it out earlier yeah strength is important it's not the only thing but but you have to have a certain amount of strength just to wrestle so my son was able to gain that you have to have a certain amount of toughness to pick yourself back up and, and believe me he was young in the sport and he didn't know the sport so he got got beat up a little bit at the beginning but i watched him pick himself back up and i'm thinking that's it that's, I'm, I want him to do this because I want him to learn those skills. It had nothing to do with him becoming a great wrestler. I wanted him just to become uh, a person that could deal with adversity. Mm. So I would recommend wrestling to any parent for their son or daughter. Mm. And what you know now that you didn't know when you were active, when you become world champion in Mexico City and San Diego and Edmonton and such, if you were to go back you know, 30 years in time to give yourself a piece of advice, uh, what would that be? That's a great question. Um, the thing that popped in my mind right now is because it's a one-on-one -on -one sport and because at the highest levels, it's usually one mistake that separates championships. And you, you're sure you're aware of this because you're a sports uh, uh, connoisseur as well. You see that in every championship, right? It's always one, one error, one mistake, one opening. It doesn't matter what the sport is. So I would say the one piece of advice is pay attention 
to the intricate details of your sport. And that's very similar to life. Pay attention to the intricate details of life because that intricate detail could make the difference between you winning or losing in a particular situation. And I think I, I've won a lot of my world championships by being able to take advantage of an opening that I was able to see and to finish uh, my technique because I was skilled. I, I practiced hard to, to perfect my skills so that if I was presented that opportunity and I was going to, I was going to close, I was going to close the takedown out. It was not going to be Lee almost scored. No, I, I'm going to score this takedown. So I had that kind of confidence in my ability and I had, I had, I had, uh, I had a lot of confidence in my, uh, ability to, to pay attention to the very smallest detail that nobody would even notice but me. Mm. Fantastic. Lee, warm thank you for your generous advice and the best of luck now in your exciting journey towards the future. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.